Daily Words of God The work of God continues to advance, and though the purpose of His work remains unchanging, the means by which He works are constantly changing, and thereby so are those who follow God. The more work of God, the more thoroughly man comes to know God, and the disposition of man changes accordingly along with his work. However, it is because the work of God is ever-changing that those who do not know the work of the Holy Spirit and those absurd men who do not know the truth become opponents of God. Not ever does the work of God conform to the conceptions of man, for His work is always new and never old. Not ever does He repeat work of old, but rather forges ahead with work never before done. As God does not repeat His work, and man invariably judges the work of God today based on His work of the past, it is exceedingly difficult for God to carry out each stage of work of the new age. Man presents far too many hindrances. The thinking of man is too hidebound. No man knows the work of God, yet they all define such work. Away from God, man loses life, truth, and the blessings of God. Yet neither does man accept life nor truth, much less the greater blessings God bestows upon mankind. All men wish to gain God, yet are unable to tolerate any changes in God's work. Those who do not accept the new work of God believe that the work of God is changeless, and that the work of God forever remains at a standstill. In their belief, all that is needed to gain eternal salvation from God is to keep the law, and as long as they repent and confess their sins, the heart of God will be forever satisfied. They are of the opinion that God can only be the God under the law, and the God who was nailed on the cross for man. It is their opinion, too, that God should not and cannot exceed the Bible. It is precisely these opinions that have shackled them firmly to the law of old and kept them fettered by rigid regulations. Even more believe that whatever the new work of God, it must be substantiated by prophecies and that in each stage of such work, all those who follow Him with a true heart must also be shown revelations, else that work could not be that of God. It is already no easy task for man to come to know God. Taken in addition to man's absurd heart and his rebellious nature of self-importance and conceit, then it is all the more difficult for man to accept the new work of God. Man neither studies the new work of God with care, nor accepts it with humility. Rather, man adopts an attitude of contempt, waiting for the revelations and guidance of God. Is this not the behavior of a man who rebels against and opposes God? How can such men gain the approval of God? At that time, Jesus stated that the work of Jehovah had fallen behind in the age of grace, much as I say today that the work of Jesus has fallen behind. If there had been only the age of law and not the age of grace, Jesus could not have been crucified and could not have redeemed all mankind. If there had only been the age of law, could mankind possibly have developed 
until this day? History advances forward. Is not history the natural law of God's work? Is this not a depiction of his management of man within the entire universe? History progresses forward. So does the work of God and the will of God continuously changes. It would be impractical for God to maintain a single stage of work for 6,000 years. For all of man knows that he is always new and never old. He could not possibly continue to sustain work akin to the crucifixion, and once, twice, three times, be nailed to the cross. This is the perception of an absurd man. God does not sustain the same work, and his work is ever-changing and always new, much as how I daily speak to you new words and do new work. This is the work I do, the key of which lies in the words new and wondrous. God is changeless, and God will always be God. This saying is true indeed. The essence of God does not change. God is always God, and he could never become Satan. But these do not prove that his work is as constant and invariable as his essence. You declare that God is thus, but how then can you explain that God is always new and never old? The work of God continuously spreads and constantly changes, and the will of God is continuously manifested and made known to man. As man experiences the work of God, his disposition continuously changes and his knowledge continuously changes. From where, then, does this change arise? Is it not from the ever-changing work of God? If the disposition of man can change, why cannot man allow my work and my words to also continuously change? Must I be subject to the restrictions of man? Are you not now simply resorting to sophistry?